We're always ready to beam down for more adventures with Captain James C. Kirk and the crew of the USS Enterprise. Luckily for us, the IDW comic book series, Star Trek Year 5, is keeping us entertained. So let's check out this month's issue. Hey everyone, my name is Captain Jack and welcome back to Trek Central. Today we're taking a quick review and look through of IDW's issue 12 of the Star Trek Year 5 series. If you haven't heard of this comic book miniseries before, then we of course urge you to check it out. You can find Star Trek Gear 5 at all good comic book stores and also online via IDW's own website and many others. If you've not heard of Star Trek Gear 5 before, then let us tell you a little bit about it. The comic book series is a miniseries from IDW Publishing and is set within the USS Enterprise's fifth year of its five year mission, hence the name. The comic has been running for over a year now, with the first issue dropping in April 2019. A brand new issue comes out each month. Don't worry, we've reviewed a few issues via our website, so check out the link below if you want to read those as well. Also, if you are new around here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video. With that out of the way, let's get into this. Star Trek Year 5 is back with an action-packed 12th issue. When we last left the crew of the Enterprise, Gary Seven, the time-travelling agent last seen in the original series episode, Assignment Earth, had taken control of a ship with the goal of destroying it and her crew. Captain Kirk ordered the evacuation of the crew to the planet Circuit V, where he stayed behind to face Gary Seven one to one. Now upon first glance at this issue, it's immediately apparent that the art style has changed. Stephen Thompson, who previously helmed the art of the previous issues, is only credited for drawing one page of the issue 12. The rest of the pages are split between Kieran McCohen and Sylvia Caferno. While Thompson's art direction aimed for a more realistic portrayal of the characters, McCohen and Califano's directions appear to be more stylized, taking a more cartoonish approach to their visual style and character design. I do apologize if I mispronounced anyone's names there. We begin issue 12 with a brutal fight between Kirk and Seven, as they punch and kick each other over the bridge consoles. Gary Seven claims that he needs to destroy the Enterprise to complete his mission and save the future. Of course, Kirk is having none of this and proceeds to stab Seven in the eye with his teleportation device. The image is visceral and gory, violence like this was never portrayed so graphically in the original series, so to see it here is quite the departure from the expectations of this universe. Frustrated that Kirk won't do the easy way, Gary Seven pulls out a gun and then commands Kirk to set a crash course for the crew's rendezvous point on the planet of Circe V. Kirk agrees to do so, seeing no other alternative. It is hard to see Kirk so defeated in this moment, usually he always has a trick up his sleeve to defeat an enemy, but this time he has been completely bested by Gary Seven. Kirk now has no choice but to destroy the Enterprise and her entire crew. On Cersei V, Spock addresses the crew and reveals to them that the captain is still on board the ship. This is met with immediate protest by the crew, who say that they should find a way to rescue their captain. This shows a level of loyalty to Captain Kirk that is usually only displayed by the senior officers. It's very interesting to get a deeper look at the average crewman's feelings on Captain Kirk, since we usually only see a focus on the senior officers, such as Spock, Ahura, McCoy, and many others. Spock appreciates the officers' concerns but chooses to use caution instead. Spock of course wants to honour Kirk's sacrifice and not put the crew in any further danger. This harkens back to the previous issue where Kirk and Spock's discussion on the philosophy of command. A captain must be willing to put everything on the line for the crew, no matter the cost. However, Spock's attitude towards the situation is immediately shifted when Dr. McCoy spots the Enterprise hurtling towards them. Spock commands Scotty to build a makeshift transporter using a Folian Bright Eyes and one of the escape pods. This would be a simple plan if not for Gary Seven's sidekick Isis who shows up in a worse time to wreak havoc on some unnamed red shirts. Poor red shirts, they can never catch a break. The sidekick then uses her shape sisting powers to grow into her massive spider-like legs and continues on her path of destruction and rampage. Sulu and Chekhov open fire on Isis while Bright Eyes assists Scotty with a transporter. Isis continues to transform until she looks like a giant grey folion. A very creepy piece of imagery that evokes something like a giant spider. Personally, I'm always fascinated by folions, but seeing this was kind of a little bit creepy. Luckily it wasn't moving around the page, it was just a comic after all. Back on the Enterprise, Kirk records a heartbreaking final captain's log. He recites his famous These are the Voyages speech, which might be the first time in universe that speech has been referenced directly. Kirk accepts death, but not before Spock beams aboard. With Kirk's help, the two subdue Gary Seven. Kirk pleads with him to surrender, but Seven refuses and beams down to the planet. He confronts his sidekick Isis, who hides behind Phaser Fire, and the two beam away. Kirk and Spock then must make a daring course correction for the Enterprise, putting it up at the last second just before it crashes onto the surface of the planet. 
The day is saved, for now. We then hear Seven's own mission log. He states that the Folian front is advancing, Starfleet is living in its final year. A bitter end to a sweet victory. Gary Seven may be gone for now, but he will undoubtedly be back sometime in the future. The idea of the end of Starfleet is either connected to the concept of Season 3 of Star Trek Discovery, in which the crew travels to the distant future where Starfleet and the Federation supposedly exist no more, an interesting parallel to this original series tale. Issue 12 closes out with Kirk commanding Sulu to set a course for Earth. On the cover of Issue 13 we see the Enterprise facing off a myriad of diverse Starfleet ships. Perhaps by Seven not destroying the Enterprise, a new timeline has been created in which the Enterprise, or Starfleet, are now the enemies. It's also interesting to see the silhouettes of so many unique 23rd century starships. We were only able to see the Constitution classes in the original series, so to see much diversity in the ship design in this era is fully realised is very exciting and I can't wait to see more of this in issue 13. Issue 12 of Year 5 provides us with a look on violence and action in Star Trek, pushed our characters to their limits and set up an uncertain future for Gary Seven, the Folians and of course Starfleet. What lies in store for our characters can only be revealed in the next issue. And that's our review and recap of Star Trek Year 5 Issue 12. Honestly, this issue was certainly something. For myself, the art style change was a pleasant but surprisingly enjoyable change. Something changing like the art style can be a little tricky and not sometimes yield the best results, but here it's been handled with care and respect, something I can personally get behind really well. Ok, so the next issue is due out in August 2020 and sees the USS Enterprise return to Federation space at long last. Keep an eye out for a review of that coming along later in August. As we end up this video, we're really interested in your thoughts on the comic book series, specifically the story on how it looks. If you want to read the full comic issue, as well as the other 11 issues in this miniseries, then check out the links below to where you can hopefully find a place to purchase this comic. If you want to keep up to date with the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then make sure to subscribe to Trek Central here on YouTube to never miss a video. You can also check out our social media pages and visit our website where you'll find our other comic book reviews. For now, I've been Captain Jack, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time. Goodbye.